dance. There's a spot open in the chorus line. I think you should try out. I got an audition! Okay, lady, I got one interest here, and that's the show. I don't care whether you live or die. I want to see you dance, and I want to see you smile. From the creators of Basic Instinct, the last time they took you to the edge, this time they're taking you all the way. We take the cash, we cash the check, we show them what they want to see. It's not about fair, it's about power. You're a stripper, don't you get it? I'm a dancer. She's dazzling, she's exciting, and she's what Las Vegas is all about. Showgirls. Leave your inhibitions at the door. <laughs> um... So I guess let's do a proper welcoming. Yeah, because Welcome a lot has show. changed. Uh, we, we've been uh, we we've been on pause for a couple weeks now. The last one we did was American Pie. Yeah, um, and this week we're coming back, uh, and we'll we'll get to the movie. I, I know those of you on the video f- uh, version of it just watched the trailer with the showgirls. and must be really confused with all this Elvis talk. <laughs> yeah. but we'll get there. Uh, Hustlers, the J Lo movie about strippers, uh, is yeah. coming out. So we, we we figured, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just do. Show Showgirls. Girls. It gives us an excuse, and we don't have to put it on the poll at the end of the year where you all vote for it anyway. Um, but uh, a as, lot as, has changed. A lot has changed. I, tw- I tweeted out and I put on Facebook uh, there's some changes, there's some additions, there's some updates. Uh, first of all, Mike went and the artist formerly known as Liam Stryker. <laughs> yeah, the artist formerly known and now a symbol uh, as uh, Liam Stryker. So, uh, so now, now going by Eddie McCabe. Yes. Uh, so basically, if you listen to the New Age Insiders and don't, if you, so if you don't listen to the New Age Insiders but only listen to the show, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if for, I'm assuming you somehow that worked. Yeah, somehow <laughs> that worked. If for some odd reason you came over from the radio show, mm-hmm. uh, doubly thank you. Welcome. Go to Showcase Subscribe. <laughs> yeah, you let get them it. know you came over. Yeah, you got that. Uh, but the uh, as a part of the New Age Insiders, I went by the name of Liam Stryker. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason I went by the name of Liam Stryker was because when the New Age Insiders, a wrestling podcast, was conceived and started five I, years ago. Yeah, five years ago and change. And and change. Uh, I was in the third round to be a writer for WWE. And so I didn't think that that podcast was going to go anywhere, if mm-hmm. I'm being honest. I mean, the, you know, there I was well, talking. No, no, nobody does. Right. Because the statistics of podcasts. Most uh, of the time you start a podcast and no matter how great your theories and your ideas right. are, it, it's mostly when reality sets in, it's right. like, it's just a couple of friends bullshitting. Exactly. And because hopefully uh, you like it. If you don't, <laughs> fuck you. Right. Nobody's paying us for this. I saw the uh, the statistic once that 99% of podcasts get under 200 listens an episode. It's true. And that's very true. So not only am not I in the few. 1%, <laughs> but I'm in the 1% twice. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, I know. What a douchey thing to say. Nice. Um, but so I didn't expect that podcast to really go anywhere. I thought like a couple people we didn't know were going to listen to it. It was going to fizzle out in a couple of months. Right. Well, five years later, that was not the case. No, no. Uh, but for those of you who are aware of all of that nonsense, you're aware that the New Age Insiders are going on a hiatus. Yeah, as of last Wednesday. As of last Wednesday. So if you're following this on Monday when yeah. this drops. <laughs> yeah, if you're watching, if you're listening to this like three years from now and you're like super confused it was the year 2019 <laughs> it was the year 25 25 <laughs> um, but so yeah so that happened and so uh basically now that that is gone i'm going by my real name mm-hmm. uh which is also my sag after name that helps. So that helps. So so now that that so, can. So now this has become a union show. This is a union show. You know I don't believe in unions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, tough shit. <laughs> this is now a union show. So if uh, we do one of those end game type episodes, you're gonna need a fucking meal break. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need a meal break, baby. Yeah, that's exactly what's gonna happen. Oh man. Uh, and it's got to be catered. Uh, but crew gets to eat first. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> sure they do. <laughs> crew gets to eat first. Oh my god, I read some pompous shit on some union Facebook group. Can I just say Facebook groups are a bit out of fucking control at this point? They are. I'm a part of a bunch of them, and they're nonsensical and fun. In the last week alone, yeah, okay, I have been invited to join 
five. 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 Different. Ah, we, I, we had to do it two more times. Five time. Five, five time. Five time. Double the double the champion. Uh, five different drink based, okay. whether it's called cocktails or drinks or beers yeah, or whatever. Right. Groups. Based out of the North Shore. That's stupid. Motherfuckers, there isn't enough bars in the North Shore to justify five different fucking groups. That's get your shit together and stop bugging my notifications. Yeah, you're a popular person. I don't want to be. See, the worst part is, is I don't want to be. <laughs> the worst part is, is that since the uh, the name reveal on the New Age Insider Show. Mm-hmm. My Facebook like ads and like and uh, like friend requests have gone through the roof. That was always the funniest thing, uh, because you you had a like page. Liam Stryker had yeah. a like page, which I tagged on on that movie show because that's what you were called. Right? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I'm one of eleven people that liked yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Nobody liked it. I never Nobody posted. knew about it. I didn't know about it until I literally was like, oh, maybe he does. Yeah. Oh, he I, does. Well, because Nine. well, because I tried to do it to separate everything sure, so that sure. you know if somebody searched me on Facebook. Facebook, it would pop up. It would go to you that. know, yeah. um, but I just never posted on it. And so you will be going by your given name, Eddie McCabe. Now, yeah, yes. Uh, and s- your social media handles are at the moment. Are at we- the moment, I'm still at Liam NAI, but that'll be changing soon. Um, but if you want to get a hold of me directly, at Fifty Six Ridge is uh, the production company. And you have that on Twitter and, and on Instagram. And on Instagram, so at Fifty Six Ridge uh, for both. And cool. That'll probably be the best way to get a hold of me. I'm still Mike Went because I'm not creative enough to come up with a fake name. Yeah, well, you know what? Yeah, you are. That was always my thing. (laughs) It has nothing to do with being, you know, pretentious or pompous because I don't like the way my name actually sounds. I think Went is too sharp of a name as fucking the German side of me. But uh, I just, I was like, "Uh, I don't feel like thinking about a fake name and then taxes and I got to fill it out anyway. What the fuck? So a friend of mine. And I didn't have the excuse of, well, I got an interview with. Paul Levesque next week. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Uh, and he might Google my ass. Yeah, well, because that was the biggest thing about it was it was just like I just don't want. It wasn't uh, when you were in the human resources interview. Yeah. It's when you're sitting o- across from Paul, quote unquote, Triple H Levesque. Yeah, and the last thing I wanted was for them to look at me and just be like. You know, I, I'm like, yeah, hey, I really want this job. It's a dream job of mine. And then they Google me, and the first thing out of my mouth is like, Vince is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny thing because you're a Triple H fan. I mean, he so was that Triple wouldn't H have fan. happened. So no. at least he, that would have that yeah. been okay. Oh, every everything that yeah, I love Triple H. He's the best. <laughs> He's the absolute best. Oh, okay. So that's that's the changes. Yeah, that's the changes. Uh, we have some additions happening. Yes. Uh, so uh, we're pregnant. We, we are. We're, we're we're expecting a TV show. Possibly. <laughs> test results are not in just yet. Yeah, Maury's going to get involved. Uh, you, you can follow our test results on thatmovieshow.net. Yes, that's I'm not the- sure if that was a thing when we did American Pie because no, it, was it was a while ago. Either way, it's been revamped since then. Uh, thatmovieshow.net is the website. And at the moment, we just have our, our video content. There's, there's just the episodes that are up on right. the YouTube channel. However... Uh, the audio feed starting this past Saturday, so if you're listening to this on Monday or after, uh, you will have the radio show. Yes. So uh, Eddie and myself have been doing a radio show on North Shore 104.9, uh, sponsored by Showcase Cinemas since March. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. It's fun. Like, like I, we can actually kind of speak freely. I do think it's, you know, like a little bit that the, it's only three movies i wish it was more um but it's super easy and i love it yeah yeah and and the fact that they jumped right on board yeah look people that say yes you're okay in yeah. my book and right. showcase said yes without hearing a single episode of this shit <laughs> <laughs> right. i do like i do think the best thing was is the person that gave him that episode was just like you guys swear a lot on that show it's just like well, no one's paying us not to. Bingo. Oh, I've been saying that for years. That's a, that's a great point. <laughs> pay us not to, and we won't. Uh, or but pay yeah, us to, whichever one. Either either way. Uh, but yeah, we've been doing a radio show, uh, that movie show, the radio version, uh, since March, which yeah. is basically a 30-minute radio show, and it covers current event news, yeah. news in movies, rumors, whatever. Uh, for instance, this past week, we spent most of the time uh, fantasy booking the proposed remake of Face Off, which... Yeah. If you've listened to our archives, I believe it was episode number two. 
yeah. of that movie show, and we're fans. Was that the one that I did when we I had like just come back from China? It was either that or The Departed. Departed was not, was our first episode. Yeah, it wasn't The Departed. It wasn't our first episode. All I remember was one of the episodes I just couldn't stay awake because I was literally coming back from China. No, I remember you being actually pretty wearing face off. It went on for two hours. Oh, then yeah, that wasn't that it episode. It might have been Spinal Tap. Might have been Spinal Tap. It was definitely in the Lawrence studio. Yeah. I remember, I remember, I remember where remember that, it was. I remember that much. I remember where it was. You were sleepy. Um, but yeah, so the radio show is going to be uploaded onto our audio feed. Uh, and if you go to thatmovieshow.net, you can find uh, subscription information for all the different podcasting apps. I mean, literally every single one from iTunes to Google, iHeart, Spotify. Uh, what's the, uh, was it Loomis? Loomisy? What is the the, the Lumin- other one I told you about? Luminosity? No, that's a, that's the... Luminary. 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 It's a, yeah. it's a yellow circle with an L in the middle. Yes. Stitcher. Um, yeah, I mean, all, all forms of podcast, even podcasts that we don't even know about because I found also, this on Luminary by accident. Right. Also, in completely unrelated but breaking news, sure. um, Movie Pass will be officially shutting down uh, for September 14th. On September 14th? Yes. Or they're just shutting down for the one day, and then they're going to come back and re- re-up everybody. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, but basically, the service will be interrupted for all subscribers on s- September 14th. Its parent company is, quote-unquote, unable to predict when or uh, if or when movie pass services will continue. That's <laughs> absolutely hilarious in the ongoing saga that of is MoviePass. Movie pass. Um, I'm so glad I got out of that. Yeah, so, so the website, uh, thatmovieshow.net. Uh, but also, we're going to start not only putting the radio show up on the audio feeds, yes. uh, but we're going to start doing more content. Yeah, correct. Uh, so you and I are both going to be doing like quick, like 10, no more than 20-minute solo reviews. Right. So you're going to have to find out. Uh, we have a YouTube and Facebook page, so make sure you subscribe to those. The easiest thing is definitely the Facebook page or the website. Yes, right. So either facebook.com slash thatmovieshowtv or just go to thatmovieshow.net. Uh, and those will be there. Uh, you know, you had uh, in the former life Striker Cinema, Striker Cinema series, where you re-reviewed most of the cinematic, the Marvel yes. Cinematic Universe. I, <laughs> that was a daunting task that I should have started way sooner, because by the time I was like, "Oh, this is going to be a good idea," and this is a great name, I'm going to start this. It was like I have to watch three movies a week. Yeah. And it was to catch up to where you need to catch up to make sure that I reached the end game goal. (laughs) And that wasn't even it. You were trying to get it before Captain Marvel. I was two months earlier. Yeah, I was trying to get it for Captain Marvel and it just didn't work. It was like, holy crap. Uh, But I know that. uh, So this week I'm going to do the the first two I have planned uh, of that, you know, small solo series that we'll be doing, which will be on the audio and video feeds. Yes. uh, Which I'm going to be doing Hustlers. Which inspired this week's show, Showgirls, which we will get to in a moment. And then also Three from Hell. Yeah. Rob Zombie's uh, final, I guess, in the trilogy of The Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah. Uh, it's, here's what I didn't find out, and here's why I'm going to be doing this this week. Um, this movie's not being released in theaters. Yeah, which is a little shocking. It's only being released in a three-night premiere event uh, through Fathom Events. Uh, it's uh, I'm seeing it at Showcase Cinemas, is what it is. Um, and basically, it, it's really cool the way they're doing it. because. And I was talking to my brother about this, uh, because he's a huge horror movie fan. He's a huge fan of this series of Rob Zombie films. And he was a little upset that it wasn't getting a wide release, because he's a school teacher, and it's a school night. Yeah. And it's only being released Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, Monday night, you get an intro from Rob Zombie, and a, a commemorative poster. Cool. Tuesday, you get the movie and a 30-minute behind-the-scenes documentary. Okay. And then Wednesday, you get a double feature of Three from Hell and The Devil's Rejects. Cool. That's the one I wanted to go to. Yeah. Again, he's a school teacher. Yeah. That would have been a very late night for him. Oh, absolutely. And a new father. So that's a very late night oh, for him. Oh, well, he's just not sleeping. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so we're going to Tuesday. We're going we're gonna to go to the one with the 30-minute uh, documentary. And the reason that we were kind of so adamant about it, because we figured, okay, it's going to get a wide release, and we'll just catch it on a r- casual Sunday afternoon. Right. Nope. It's getting only these three screenings, 
and then it's hitting uh, Blu-ray, DVD, and on demand October fifteenth. Okay. So it's like if you want to see it in the big screen, which I'm a fan of this series, I want to see it on the big screen. Right. You have to go one of these three nights, uh, which is kind of cool, kind of different, and probably saved him a ton on you know money. Yeah. Save the studio on marketing budget. Right. It saves a ton on prints and all that. I mean, prints, it's not really a thing anymore. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. On USB drives. Exactly. I mean, I'm sure somewhere down the line, this was more cost, cost effective. And more importantly, getting the movie into the core audience's homes two yeah. weeks before Halloween, probably a better move than right. trying to put it in theaters a month before Halloween. That makes sense. My opinion. But uh, so that and Hustlers, the J-Lo stripper movie, uh, I'll have reviews for later in the week. Uh, but you want to get into Showgirls? I mean, let's get into Showgirls. Let's, let's start A it. movie that took me so many times to try and get through. Fucked up thing. I actually saw this in theaters back in 95. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like this, this is like the movie that I always kind of go to when I think of a, sh- a movie like Showgirls is the movie Jumper with Samuel L. Jackson Ooh. and Hayden Christensen. Okay. Where the marketing budget for this was so, for that movie was so aggressive mm-hmm. that the amount of hype surrounding it. I don't remember it. Uh, it's the movie where Hayden Christensen it can just like basically Nightcrawler Bamf uh, from place to place, and Samuel L. Jackson like works for the government or the Vatican or something, and wants to kill all the people that can do it. Can do that. Two thousand eight. Yes. Ish. Yeah. And <laughs> jumper, not the women's clothing garment. Yeah. Oh uh, no, and, no, I don't. I don't. And so this movie was absolute. That's a house that's phone. A house phone. We are actually broadcasting from 1995. Yeah. Where Showgirls is about to hit theaters. We're taking it back. Call waiting. Google it, kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the the thing with Hayden Christensen or this movie was it was everywhere because it was released during like football season. Mm-hmm. So it was all over Fox broadcasts. Gotcha. And so the hype for this movie was like, man, you got to see Jumper. You got to see Jumper. You got to see Jumper. And then you saw it and it was the hottest of garbage. <laughs> and so that's how I feel about Showgirls where it's like this movie, uh, if you watch it, was like, man, you were going for the Oscar. You were like trying to, and I don't know where it's released in relation to Pretty Woman. Uh, pretty, yeah, Pretty Woman. Oh, like at least ten years later. It was, yeah, Pretty right. Woman was eighties. Oh, okay, so then yes. So then this movie was like trying to take the hooker with a heart of gold and like try to see. I uh, see. I think you're way off on that. Really? Yes. I, so I I think that this movie was just trying to go for the go, for the like go for the gold. I, I've done a bit of research in the last 24 hours. Okay. Uh, while I was watching it, I did a bunch of research. Uh, and and I don't, again, I said this at the bar before we started. It's a very misunderstood film. Yeah. And part of it is I've seen a bunch of interviews. I've read a bunch of interviews with actors and writers and okay. Paul Verhoeven, the director, and I don't understand any of them. Yeah, sure. So I think it's a very misunderstood film. Yeah, probably. Uh, let, me, let me get my OCD out of the way. Showgirls was released September 22nd, 1995. It had a budget of $45 million. Yeah. Came back with 37.8 at the box office. Did not make money. No. It was written by Joe Esterhaus. It directed by Paul Verhoeven. Yes, the team behind <laughs> Basic Instinct, RoboCop. Yeah. Super, uh, not Super Troopers, Starship Troopers. Troopers. Starship Troopers. It starred Elizabeth Berkley, Kyle McLaughlin, Gina Gershon, Glenn Plummer, Robert Davi, uh, a bunch of other people, uh, and the city of Las Vegas as a whole. <laughs> the city of Las Vegas. Here's the thing. Okay. Here's what Paul Verhoeven wanted you to take away from it. Okay. According to, and I didn't just read one, uh, multiple right. interviews. This is what director Paul Verhoeven wanted you to take away from Showgirls. Um, it was supposed to depict every single person in the movie, with the exception of Molly, okay, uh, Nomi's roommate. Yep, was like she, Molly was the only good redeemable character by design okay. in the movie. So they actively were doing things in the movie to make everyone a scumbag. Yeah, okay, as a an example of the strip club culture in Las Vegas because huh. Esther House and Verhoeven 
actually did research. They did a lot of interviews right. with uh, strippers in Las Vegas, and a lot of their actual quotes that they got from them made it into the script. Okay. Uh, so a lot of the dialogue came from strippers in Las Vegas that they talked to. Okay. Um, now, that being said, yeah, something... Granted, this also swept the Razzies, by the way. Yes. Paul Verhoeven, also historically the only and first director... Well, I'm sorry, not the only, but the first director right. to show up to the Razzies to accept his award. Yes. Uh, to much their shock. Of course. Um, he's gone on record, and I don't know if he actually means this, or if he's just being a good guy and taking a bullet to try to save Elizabeth Berkeley's career as an actress. Okay. Because a lot of people talk about her acting. Yeah. And how bad bad it was oh it's brutal and how manic and erratic she seemed yeah he said in more than a few interviews that there was an underlining subtext to her character that her character had a serious drug problem okay and that he was specifically directing her to act that way okay my feeling a lot of these interviews came out more than 10 years after the movie. Right, so you have time to think about he it. He might have been like, look, leave her alone. Yeah. She's a good kid. Leave her alone. Right. Let her have a career. Um, <laughs> this movie was a, a series of Elizabeth Berkeley either manically running in or out of scenes. Right. I mean, <laughs> like, oh, well, that, was, that was everything. It, it makes sense when you say it. That it's like okay, yeah, an underlying drug problem. The only problem is, is that if if the behavior is the only thing, my problem, my that was my problem. His explanation for it, yeah, he said, well, at the end when Kyle McLaughlin is reading off her arrest record, there's drug charges. Okay, I read that interview before watching the movie, so when that scene came up, I was paying close attention. Yeah, I bet it's he's glossed over running down the list of charges, and like all of them are hooking. Yeah, right. Couple assault and batteries, one cocaine possession yeah. in the whole list. One cocaine possession. Not even trafficking. Yeah. Possession. possession. Yeah. All of them were hooking, and then he leads in and then he continues on the hooking. It wasn't about her drugs. It was about right. because he literally he finishes leading reading off her rap sheet and looks at her in the face and goes, How much were you charging? Yeah, right. A scene I completely forgot that had happened, but watching it last night, how much were you charging? And she's like 50, sometimes 100. And he goes, you have low self-esteem. You're a better fuck than that. And then she runs off and he's like, I was paying you a compliment. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, what a movie. What a movie. Yeah, it's like, again, it makes sense if that's what you're going for. But it's kind of like whenever you're in English class. I just don't believe it's what they're going for. Oh, no, no, not at all. It's kind of like when you're in English class and you're reading a book and you're like reading a paragraph and you're English and it's like, oh, in against the windows were light blue curtains. And then, you know, their English teacher goes, and what do you think the curtains meant? In turn, And it's just like, it meant that her virginity was still pure. And it's like, yes, you are right. And it's just like, I don't know, maybe they were just saying the curtains were blue, you dumb asshole. Yeah, yeah. You know so- what I mean? Sometimes the curtains are just blue, you know, and that's and other kinda... times they're red, and neither time does it mean shit to the other hundred and eighty pages of the story. Right, <laughs> and that's kind of how I feel about that that answer, where it's just like, yeah, if you were directing her to be a drug addict, you should have put drugs in the movie. Well, the funny thing is, there was a lot of drugs. In the right, movie. well, her and, doing drugs, and, and, but but she cat like the only time she interacts with drugs. It's very casual, right? Because it's after um, the ludicrous, not what I ludicrous say, sex problem. scene with Kyle McLaughlin in the pool. Okay, uh, th- it's the morning after, and she's telling him she has a cab waiting outside, and she just casually takes her pinky nail and scoops a thing of coke and puts it in her nose. Not like, oh my god, I'm a, yeah, I'm right. a drug addict. It's it's yeah. just it's as casual as grabbing a bottle of water on right. the way out. Casual, not a problem. Not even a little bit. It doesn't explain the rest of the movie. Yeah, right. Right. It doesn't. It, yeah. It's not some sort of weird, like, 
you spiraled out of control and right. dis- like um like uh, Henry Hill in Goodfellas. Yes, exactly. You, like, that, that's someone with a drug problem. You know what I mean? Like that character spirals out of control and has a ton of drug problems. That's someone who has a cocaine problem. Right. When you're seeing helicopters in the air. <laughs> yeah, right. And so at no point did it feel like that. Your girlfriend doing eight balls and fucking packing coke in her fucking apartment. Maybe a problem. Right. This um this movie <laughs> <laughs> This fucking movie. This fucking movie, <laughs> man. It's going to be back. <laughs> this fucking mm. movie. Uh, Hashtag this fucking movie. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm trying to place it, but it's just batshit crazy because it feels like we just tried to hit a bunch of stereotypes. And when you make a movie that's for an industry, I don't know if necessarily like attacking an industry like this mm-hmm. is necessarily the one you want to like have to go to the movies. Well, because like office space was like to for the American office worker. And it's just like, OK, again, uh, th- this movie had had potential yeah sure uh if if you if you look and it takes a lot it takes a lot of effort and very soft eyes to look through all the shit yeah it's like one of those magic mirror you know what i mean paintings to or actually whatever. see the story behind the acting yeah right it's like this could have been something right because it's just it's the story of a vagrant restarting and then, like, basically ending up in the same place at the end. Well, the, the, the funny thing, you, you bring up the end, um, there was supposed to be a, there was a sequel, but there was supposed to be an actual official sequel. We'll talk right. about the sequel, the actual sequel later. Um, and there's a reason behind it. So if she comes full circle. Nomi, right, yes. No, Nomi Malone is played by Elizabeth Berkley. And she comes full circle. The guy it's who... It's crazy on the nose. Who... <laughs> who picks her up both in the opening of the movie and the close of the movie, clearly at one time or another has done a made-for-TV Elvis movie. Uh, so he picks her up. She pulls the switchblade on him. I'm talking about the ending here, because yeah. literally the ending and the beginning are the same fucking thing. Yeah. And they're driving off, and she's waving a knife around, and where's my fucking suitcase? Because he stole her suitcase in the opening of the yeah, movie. Yeah, right. Um, and they, they pan out, and they pan over a billboard... That's for her, right? And the show Goddess that she's yeah. on at the Stardust, and then the camera, and this was so deliberate because I I knew it was coming because again I had I'd read interviews that the camera movement is extremely unprofessionally jarring. Yeah, of course. It's a it's one of the worst camera moves I've ever fucking seen. <laughs> so it's it's like a nice it's a nice easy pan out of the pickup truck driving down the road, yep. pans over her billboard, and then it was almost as if the cameraman like oh fuck we need to go back mm-hmm. in. And it was like, mm-hmm. it just took a weird nosedive. But it ends on a highway sign for Los Angeles. Right. The actual sequel that Joe Esterhouse wrote a treatment for was called Bimbo's Nomi Takes Hollywood. That's bananas. She was supposed to go and take over Hollywood. She was supposed right. to become an actress. Right. So it's like she comes into Vegas, makes her mark as a showgirl, and then takes off to Hollywood. Yeah, just and that to be was, an actress. And that was the, supposed to be the natural transition into Showgirls 2, a.k.a. Bimbo's Nomi Takes Hollywood. That sounds bananas. I would have loved to see it. Let's make it ourselves. I, You know what? I bet we could get Elizabeth Berkley involved. You know what? Let's just recast her. Nope. Okay, fine. I'm well, determined, and here's why I'm determined. <laughs> yeah, she was only paid a hundred grand for this movie. That's and I, she's <sighs> really in it. <laughs> all yeah. of her is in this movie. Yeah. I mean, all of it. All of her is in this movie for a hundred grand. Hey now, and here's the shitty part about that: not the pay, but the fact that when they did the 15th anniversary Blu-ray. And they were going around collecting interviews and you know retrospective things. She asked for twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah, okay. And they said fuck off. That's stupid. And didn't include her in it. And instead went and just filmed some strippers from Scores and had them basically do a mystery science theater stripper version of this movie on the Blu Ray. That's instead bananas. of having her instead of just giving her two grand. Yeah. They just were like no, no. 
it wasn't worth $2,000 to literally have the star of the fucking movie. Right. The woman on every poster. Yeah. Holy crap. Look back 15 years later and talk about it. That's stupid. That's ins- I would have paid two grand for that. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're, I think you're 100% uh, right. So let's jump in. Nomi, hitchhiking. Yeah. On the outskirts of the Vegas desert. Gets pick, picked up by uh, made-for-TV Elvis. Yeah. Uh, sh- they're driving. She pulls a switchblade on him. Okay. Shit just goes haywire. Yeah, right. He makes what most people would think would be the right decision, and it's like, well, fuck this nonsense. Get and out. Slams off the road and is like, get out. Yeah. They make friends. They make nice. He feeds her a story about his uncle being a host at the Riviera, and he's going to get her a job because right. she wants to be a dancer. And da, 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 da. Okay. Leave, and he, very convincing. Yeah. Leave your suitcase in the truck. No big deal. Here's 10 bucks. Go play some slots. Right. So he takes off looking for his uncle. She hits on the first fucking slot. Yeah. Hey, Vegas, baby. Coins everywhere. Right. Cut to she's out of coins. Right. He's nowhere to be seen. She's donned on because she's out of coins. Yeah, right, that he's gone. Runs out to the parking lot. Miraculously, his truck not there. Not only that, an empty parking spot, letting us know that his truck was there at oh, one time. Oh, it was, but it, oh, it's so she sad. She flips out. She starts going haywire and beating the shit out of a car. Enter Molly, yes. the only good person in this movie, <laughs> who we will get to in a little bit, because the only good person is treated the worst in this movie. Of course, because good nice guys finish last. Exactly, and nice. No, well, we'll get to it in a second. Yeah. Um, so she, we meet Molly. Uh, Nomi, acting all kinds of fucking crazy, yeah. just dives into the strip, like trying to get hit by a car. Yeah, of course. Ten minutes in, and you've given up on life. Yeah. I'm well, all... when you find out why a little bit later. Well, she had just got to town. I know. She lost her clothes. Okay. Yeah, but th- look, but the it wasn't like thing. Ah, mm. it wasn't like the job she was going into needed much clothing. Yeah, it was none actually. None. 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 You could do it with literally what's un. You needed less than you were wearing. Yeah, right. Less than you were wearing. Yeah. So you make enough money and you buy a new suitcase. True. Unless there was like gold fucking Krugerrands in that suitcase. You never know. Hold over from Lethal Weapon Two. Russian I don't know. Ruples. <laughs> so Rupees? anyway, I don't know. One is from Zelda. Uh, so Molly, uh, being the only nice person, only nice person in Las Vegas. Yeah, because uh, that doesn't exist, especially in 95 Vegas. And in, invites her to live with her. Yeah, hey, you vagrant child. Here's here's a soda and some french fries, which, by the way, like, I don't know. How, there's so many moments in this movie Yeah, that I would have told Elizabeth Berkeley to go fuck yourself. Uh, this first one. She literally throws french fries at this woman that just bought them for her. Right. Oh, I know. Because she asked, where are you from? Yeah, right. Where are you from? Back east. Oh, really? Whereabouts? Boom. Face full of French fries with ketchup. Yeah, monster. Bitch. Have you ever eaten? Bitch. Like, have you ever watched somebody eat something with ketchup, but you're not having ketchup? It makes you sick. No. No. No, I've no, I've never had that experience. Oh God, my my sister put ketchup on everything. Okay. And if it was something that <laughs> not doesn't, Frank's Red Hot. Yeah, no. But in now, if it's like Heinz Fifty Seven, we put that shit on everything. That's my sister. And like, if it's something that doesn't normally have ketchup on it, the smell of ketchup just makes me gag. Hmm. When it's like not on something appropriate. Interesting. Fun fact. Yeah. From Eddie McCabe. Boom. We're 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 no starting, longer Liam Stryker. Allow me to reintroduce myself. <laughs> So, yeah, so she's going to get, so she also gets offended by the uh, the stripping, right? Well, ish. 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 Um, she, she definitely doesn't like being called a whore. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. <sighs> Even though we find out. She was. At the end, which we already talked about, she was, and not even one that respected herself. No, I mean, she could have gotten 50 more. bucks for yeah. a lay? Yeah, two hundo, easy. I mean, I mean, he said it. He's like, you got low self-esteem, yeah. honey. Well, and right. Which I guess would probably feed into Verhoeven's idea of the drug problem. I mean, you, right. you do what you got to do to find the next fix. You know, right. you feed so the you monkey, got, whatever. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we jumped from. I think we jump right into the you know the that scene the oh, the, the, yeah. the hand wipe scene because um, yeah. we don't see her actually at the strip club until after we meet Gina Gershon. That's right. So we jump from she auditions throwing French fries in Molly's face to living with Molly in her trailer. Yes. And Molly says, "Hey, why don't you come to the show?" Right. Okay, or come backstage or whatever, and you can wear the dress I made with the fringe. A lot of fringe in this movie, oh, by the yeah, way. Well, it's Vegas. Glitz glamour, baby. Vegas in the mid-90s, baby. Lots of fringe. Fringe style. And uh, so she's got this uh, pink frilly number, and we find out that she's into doing her own nails. Okay. Cool. As you, uh, cool, as you do. Um, nothing wrong with that, I guess. I don't I don't, I don't do my own I, nails. I don't eat. I bite them. <laughs> Don't really. I bite my own nails, um, not other people's. It's weird. Um, you know what? Somebody might be into that. Well, I apparently, know me for fifty bucks. <laughs> bite your fucking nails. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bite your fucking nails. So, okay. was Doug in this movie? I'll, I'll be your Doug. I'll be your Doug. Um, no, Black Doug was not in this movie. What about Mr. Chow? Hopefully, Mr. Chow's in this movie. I'd like to think of that. Oh, when did you fall asleep? I fell asleep because I, you fe- you said you fell asleep halfway. Did you did you see them at the boat show? I fell asleep right before the boat show. Ah, so Mr. Chow's like and, uncle was kind of in yeah, the boat show. Yeah, we go see Caesar sing. <laughs> we sing, nice, right? I mean, it was basically the Chinese Borat. Yeah, I because I've seen this movie. I've I have seen this movie before, and so I vaguely remember that Caesar sing. I just remember we sing, nice. <laughs> Just very <laughs> nice. <laughs> we'll go have lobster and watch Caesar sing. Uh, I don't. I don't know why that's code for rape in Vegas, <laughs> because like it happens later in the movie. So they're at the boat yeah, show. Right. We're gonna jump around for a second. Yeah. Right. Um, well, I mean, it's because the plot's ludicrous. Yeah. It, yeah. So they get to the boat show. This is after Nomi is already a showgirl. She's in the show. Uh, yeah, they pushed a girl down the stairs. Uh, that that hasn't happened. Oh, quite that hasn't yet. happened yet. No, not. Oh, not so yet. she's just in the chorus at this point. Well, Nomi's the one that pushes Gina Gershon down the stairs. Yes. Uh, the the dreadlocks white girl throws the the stones on the stage and makes the uh, the black girl who she doesn't like she falls and busts her knee to fucking right, shit. Right. That's right. And then. Somehow that causes Nomi to become the understudy. Oh no, she became the understudy because she fucked Kyle McLaughlin yeah. in one of the most ludicrous sex scenes ever imaginable. Yeah, I mean, all the sex in this movie is just for for a movie that was about, really about sex. Yeah, like the we're, sex scenes were horrible. We're talking about like almost like uh, there was one that was like the room. That was exactly what I was. About I know to that's reference. where you were going. There was one that was exactly like the room. Trying to fuck her belly button. No, but, <laughs> but from that, behind. Yeah. yeah, right. So I'm watching it, and I'm just like, "That's not how okay, anatomy works." Only two things are happening right now. Either he's going right, right up her asshole, but <laughs> everyone's enjoying this way too much for that to be happening, or right. he's basically fucking her lumbar which is like right. lower back area because yeah. the way it's positioned yeah he's like trying to put a hot dog in a hamburger bun and, or and again, a hot dog bun it was a scene i completely wiped from my memory oh god yeah um and that's not even the rape no we'll get there right. anyway at the boat show nomi and the other girl dancing on the on boats as you do. Yeah. Well, have you ever been to a trade show? It's they hire these girls. girls they do boats. it. They don't have to be from a fucking Vegas review show club thing. No. They just hire hot girls to wander right. around. I mean, liquor sponsors do it at bars all the fucking right. time. It's a growth industry. Look into it, girls. And then they come down, and it's the, her producer from the show, and he's with this Asian whale. And. Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, so, they you know. Go to the MGM because at this point they had the line and they wouldn't go in through the lion's mouth. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so he's like, so, okay, we're going to go over this. We're going to go over the palace and, you know, we'll hear Caesar sing. We'll have some lobster and then we'll all go back to my place, just the four of us, and we'll sing. And the Asian guy just kind of steps right into Nomi's face in literally the creepiest way ever. Yeah. Like, this is not how you, even if you're planning on gang fucking these girls by surprise this is not how you go about it fellas okay he literally gets right nose to nose where he goes caesar sing we sing nice <laughs> like i don't know i'm a large man yeah that's terrifying i'd fucking run <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> i wouldn't wait around for to see how this plays out no thank you 
Um, so anyway, backing up a bit. Yeah, right. So oh, yeah. She goes she goes to the show that her Molly is the costume designer on on the, the goddess show at the at the goddess. Stardust. Uh, which stars Crystal Connors, played by Gina Gershon, who is literally the only person that made it out of this movie alive. Um, yeah. I mean, career-wise. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's literally... The, like, I looked it up. Like, everyone else just kind of went to shit after this. Yeah. Some of them already had... You know, pre- Kyle MacLaughlin had a decent career already, so it didn't really count. The side characters... Nobody you heard know, from again. You know, J- Jack McGee, I, I, he's a character actor. Yeah. It doesn't really count. But, like, as far as the core... The, yeah. The people... On the poster here, right? Gina Gershon was really the only, the only one, one to make it out surviving, and she did. A, if again, if you're watching it and you're just watching the acting, you're not worrying about the story or how fucked up this whole movie is. <laughs> yeah, right. She did okay. Yeah, she did okay. She hit her marks. She said her lines. Mm, yeah, she got out of it. Nipples look great. We're all good. <laughs> yeah, she got in, got out. She got in, got out. Yeah, look, it wasn't quite strip tease, but you know, she was trying. Oh my god. I'm a little upset we didn't do striptease. Instead of this? Because striptease has one of my favorite Burt Reynolds uh, performances ever. Oh, I've see, I've never seen all of striptease. Oh, okay. Are we Maybe gonna- that is our Christmas watch along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Demi Let me Moore. put it this way. The, there's, a, there's a scene in the last 15 minutes of this movie that, that has Burt Reynolds in white boxer shorts, a black leather vest, ca- black leather cowboy boots, head to toe, Vaseline, and he, he opens a scene with, I can feel it squishing between my toes. <laughs> <laughs> that shit happens. <laughs> All right. Because literally Demi Moore walks in the room and goes, what is that? And he goes, it's Vaseline. <laughs> no. Nope. I'm covered in it. <laughs> oh, I can feel it squishing between my toes. I feel it squishing between my toes. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. No, thank oh, you. That and Robert Patrick was fantastic in that movie. Okay. Oh, he's all, he's, he's all, he's like a pilled up Florida hillbilly. It's, oh, okay. God. Okay. Maybe a bonus show coming up in the next month. Uh, it I'm can so be. excited. It can be. I'm so excited. Anyway. So uh, she meets Crystal Connors, and yeah. uh, she gets her first glimpse of what it's like in a, at a Vegas showgirl uh, yeah. review at, at the Goddess Show, and she's so impressed with everything. She's so excited. She's mildly starstruck by Crystal Connors until she pulls her stereotypical thing throughout this movie, which right. some... Uh, so, okay. Oh, I, I remember what it was. So uh, she tells Crystal she's a dancer. Where do you dance, hon? The cheetah. Yeah. And Crystal just kind of side-eyes her and goes, well, I don't know what you're good at at the cheetah, but it definitely ain't dancing. Hey, go fuck yourself. And then, running out of the room like fucking Kermit the Frog. (laughs) Yeah, right. Well, that's like, that's what she did. She goes zero to pizza in 60 seconds. (laughs) Her exits are epic. Oh, yeah. They are the greatest... Dramatic Muppet, like, like if you ever saw someone doing it in real life, you'd just be like, God, I feel bad for whoever is dating her. Yeah, of course. He has to deal with that every night. Every night. I was thinking steak for dinner. Well, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I wanted fish. Oh, okay. Oh, mm. ladies, that's how drinking problems start. <laughs> <laughs> Um. So, she doesn't want to go to work. She has to go to work. She doesn't want to go to work. Instead, her uh, apparently her and her friend Molly there, they go to this club a lot. Yeah, they dance. This dance club. They dance. Which is just insane. Yeah. Because she's like, all right, well, let's let's go. And, you know, where are you going? I don't know. And then, you know, whatever. And they smash cut to a big dancing nightclub. Yeah. And all you see is Elizabeth Berkeley's blonde hair and pink dress going batshit in the middle of this fucking crowd. Like, I've never seen someone dance like, like that. she's a maniac, but not the fun flash dance way. No, not at all. It was like, mmm. Put a spoon under her tongue, because something's off. (laughs) Yeah, she might be tasting pennies. Which, (laughs) yes. And then we're introduced to Glenn Plummer's character, Mm. uh, who is the, uh, he's he's a bouncer in this club. Yes. He's also, like, the best stalker ever. Oh, sexy stalker. 
Like, he is good at stalking. Yeah. I didn't mean, like, best as in, like, you want him stalking you. I just mean, like, his batting average is great as far as stalking is concerned. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, he probably spent a lot of time perfecting the craft. Well, he's a bouncer in Vegas. He's a bouncer in Vegas. Yeah. So, he's he wants to go dance with her. Of course he does. Because he thinks he's a good dancer. But he is not. And he thinks she thinks she's a good dancer. She is not. They both start having a seizure on the dance floor. Yep. Lots of herky-jerky movement stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I think the kids call it tutting. Look, I saw a lot of it in Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo, and it wasn't good then. It's not great in 1995. Yeah. No, not 10 years later. So he pays her a compliment. I forget exactly. Oh, I remember what it was. She kept turning. Like, when she was dancing... When she wasn't flailing about like Kermit the Frog, yeah. she was turning her ass into his crotch and basically giving him a standing lap dance. Correct. Grinding, as the kids would say. And he says, you can't dance. And she says, well, what are you doing? As she says that, she turns around again and starts grinding on his dick again. And he goes, you're teasing my dick. Yes. Very accurate, factual statement. This is like, this what guy, is happening. This guy has the worst luck, but is also kind of a cunt, so nobody really cares about it. Because she then backs up, smiles... One, two, knee to the balls. Yeah. Starts a bar fight. Yeah. Which wouldn't happen. No, because... He would fall back. they think, oh, drunk guy on the dance floor. And everyone would just kind of back away. Instead, haymakers are just being well, thrown. Well, that's my favorite stereotype in those type of settings. Right. Because it's like, if we're just at this bar and an interaction between two people that we don't know happens to get physical, I'm not going to turn to you and sock you. No. Like, that's all. never going to happen. No. Uh, I, I'm not looking to get into problems. Yeah. Like, they, I'm not looking for that shit. And, like, yeah, if, if you and your woman have an issue, that's yeah. between the two of y'all. Fighting. If you bump into me, I will at most be like, hey, easy now. Yeah. Not, hey, bang. <laughs> yeah. Fighting at a bar isn't dominoes. <laughs> Like, I, don't, I don't know if you know that. It's it's portrayed like that in movies all the time. All the time. Where it's just like a bunch of people that have nothing to do with each other just start brawling. Yeah. And then the, the main uh, like character ends up like squeaking out, oh, my God, that was crazy. It's like, that's never it the case. It really is the old-timey Western way of looking right. at things. Like, you, 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 know, you walk in. What you looking at, boy? And like 40 people start a gunfight. Yeah, right. Everybody starts shooting each other. Like, and... His problem, it was an A and B problem. Right. Why are we at Q at this point? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so anyway, a brawl breaks out. Uh, and then his bouncer buddy grabs Nomi and says, oh, she started it. She's gone. Another part that is completely unrealistic but needs to happen for that later part where Kyle McLaughlin finds a rap sheet. Yeah. She gets actually arrested and thrown in jail. Yeah. As opposed to just, boom, out of the club. Yeah, you're out of the club. Like, they, that means that bouncer grabbed her, took her to some, like, office or something, sat her, sit held there. her there until police showed up. Right. They handcuffed her because she started a fight. Right. And then took her to jail, booked her, took her fingerprints. Yeah, that's a lot. That's excessive. That is excessive. That is excessive. But we need it to pay off the rap sheet later because right. that's the whole thing. You got arrested at Club Hell or whatever the fuck it was, and they took your fingerprints. Okay, fine. Storytelling. Cool. Uh, she gets bailed out by Glenn Plummer. Yes. Now, okay, so that's stalking part number two. Maybe he knew that she got arrested. Maybe he knew where they took her. So he goes and bails her out. Right. She's still being a dick to him. Yeah. She's still... Literally pumping her f hand into his chest, saying "Back off, motherfucker!" Yep. and blah blah blah. Uh, her friend shows up at the same exact time, which is just all kinds of weird. Like, d did you go home and and sleep this off, and then go get your car, and and then wait and get and breakfast, get maybe, and then right. figure? Well, it's you know, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Let me go I'll bail go, Nomi out of jail. I'll go bail my roommate out. I mean, why wasn't she there waiting? Right. Why didn't she go with her to the police Besides station? plot convenience. Uh, that would be the answer. Okay. So, I think then we just smash cut right to the strip club. I think so. And we're in the cheetah. <laughs> that sounds funny. We're in the cheetah. Um, we're in the strip club, the cheetah. Uh, Robert Davi, who is one of the diehard Johnsons, uh, yeah. is the manager there. 
and another famous Vegas scumbag, apparently. Of course. Uh, because he's introducing uh, this new girl, played by uh, Rena Rafali, who, fun fact, wrote and directed the unofficial sequel, Showgirls 2, Pennies from Heaven, which you have to realize that this bit part in this movie, which has one line of dialogue is actually the subtitle of the sequel because what? he explains that her name is Penny because nobody wants to fuck a hope. They want to fuck a penny. I don't get it. I don't care what their name is. That's just a dumb line that makes it to the next title. I just, what could that movie possibly be about? I Especially don't when we know. Had Bimbo's. <laughs> no Bimbo's No Me Takes Hollywood sounded fantastic. Yeah. But that would have taken a studio backing. <laughs> Uh, I I will get it in the next like year or two, right? I, I hope so. I mean, everything old is new again. Right. So we might you know what I mean. Showgirls. Um, two. I will say that Showgirls Two, Electric Boogaloo, Pennies from Heaven, Electric Boogaloo, is available to rent for a dollar ninety nine on YouTube. Oh God, let's do it. Which means possible bonus watch along coming soon to that movie show dot yeah. net. I have time. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? I don't know how I feel about it yet. <laughs> and um, so, okay, so he introduces her to all the girls. And we're in the strip club, and everybody just seems like, again, something a little inside baseball. Ooh. Something that they never portray well is like, the they always seem like there's like a big backstage dressing room oh, area yeah. of strip clubs with all these lighting yep. mirrors and shit. Yeah. It's like a high school gymnasium locker room yeah. in real life. Yes. Like, You've been there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like, yeah. Yeah, it's not, well, then that's the thing. It's a strip club. It's not a Broadway play. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. They're doing their makeup in the bathroom some of the time. Yeah. If there's a mirror available, they're lucky. Um, yeah. But anyway. It's a movie. Yeah, right. So, apparently, um, another, another just bad piece of inside baseball is when uh, the girls are going up on stage and Robert Davi, the manager, yes. just picks up a microphone and introduces them. It's like, well, the DJ has a job. Yeah, right. That's his job. That is the DJ's job. And how would... I'll get to more. There's a lot of inside baseball in this whole strip club scene that, that just bothers the shit out of me. Yeah, that's fun. Anyway... So we find out that uh, that Nomi has you know works here for six weeks. Yep. And uh, there's uh, the 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 big woman Henrietta, mm -hmm. uh, who gets up stage and and does basically insult crowd comedy. Yeah, because that always goes over well. Have you ever been to a strip club where the feature act does comedy instead of like dance? No. Okay, I have. Uh, oh, pray tell. It's at the Cadillac Lounge in Providence, Rhode Island. And Terry Wagle, okay. who's like an 80s porn star, was there. Uh, Billy and I interviewed her for the podcast in a former life in the Mike and Billy show uh, because we were friends with the Cadillac you Lounge. Use a fake name there? Nope, no, oh, okay. Mike and Billy. Uh, even Billy didn't use a fake name. And uh, we were friends with the Cadillac Lounge, and, and we would interview some of their featured acts. We had her, we had Bonnie Rotten on, okay. and, and stuff like that. That sounds uh, like a terrible name for a stripper, Bonnie Rotten. <laughs> yeah, she's a good time. And uh, I, 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 I made a DP rep joke that went completely over her head. That's pretty funny. Because I, I was reading her bio, and it says, into DP, and I'm like, oh, so you're like into your director of photography, huh? Very and she's fun. and nothing and I'm like no I get it double penetration you're, you're okay mo moving on <sighs> Man, that's anyway too, that's too bad Terry Wagle yeah. uh, 80 eighties porn star still uh, hanging on to that that spotlight uh, doing the feature acts around the country uh, strip clubs yep uh, she got up on stage took off all her clothes grabbed a microphone and just started doing insult comedy and it was rough that sounds it terrible. was rough comedy it was like Whatever the next rung below dad jokes are, that's what like stripper Mime. jokes are. Mime? <laughs> no, because that would include not talking. That would have been much better. Yeah, but I don't know. That would have been much better. Don't speak. Um, but no, it, it was like it was bad. It was like all like we get it, pussy jokes. It was like 
The discard. Like Amy Schumer? I was going to say it was Amy Schumer's discarded routine. Oh, no. So it's like all the pussy <laughs> jokes that didn't. Mary Jane. Okay, get up on stage, Wendy, and then just say, Mary Jane. Look, women are funny. Get over it. Yeah. South Park. Anyway. Is a very funny show. South Park, very funny show. Very funny. Uh, got re-signed for three more seasons. Wow. They're going to go up to 20, 26 with this current contract. That's amazing. Um, so uh, she's up there. She's doing jokes. She's talking about how, you know, she'd have to piss on the guy so he could find her pussy and, you know, that sort of stuff. Oh, great. Uh, it, it's hilarious. God. Hilarious. Nothing is worse than bad stand-up. I mean, like I said, I saw this movie in the theater. Right. This was a strip club scene in a supposed sexy movie that was getting groans in a theater. Yeah. Like, ugh. Gross. Ugh. <laughs> ugh. And they gave us a free poster with our ticket, <laughs> which was this, the, the actual cover. That sounds terrible. Funny thing enough. I saw a strip tease in the theater, got a poster of that one, too. Weird that those two movies were just handing out posters. Like, why would I want to take this home? Why do I want a souvenir that says I went to this movie? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but if you have everybody sign it, it might be worth something. Yeah. Well, apparently, Elizabeth Birkin won't sign it for less than $2,000. And everybody tells her, fuck off. <laughs> worth it. <laughs> worth it. Uh, speaking of that, in, in the theater. So... When this movie came out, uh, Paul Verhoeven was adamant about delivering, like up front, he was up front with the studio, delivering an NC-17 movie. Yes. Uh, which really had never been done before. Um, NC-17 movies were always given the rating after the movie was screened for the MPAA. Right. He was coming forward and saying, this is going to be an NC-17 movie. That being said, the marketing for the movie didn't rely on the rating no. and what i mean by that is is in reference to like seth rogan's recent uh producing efforts uh good boys was one right and sausage party was another right. where every two seconds in the trailer and all the promotion material you get a big r rated slapped across your face right this movie just came out it had an NC-17 rating if you went to the theater under 17 and tried to see it you wouldn't be admitted but it wasn't relying on the NC-17. It's yeah. like, it wasn't like, this is sexy. Yeah, because um, it was just the he, Good Boys, he, their whole marketing campaign was Seth Rogen sitting in front of the, the stars of it being like, you can't watch, you this. Can't watch this movie. And this so, is this is a dirty movie. This is an R-rated movie with kids. The boom before, this is an R-rated movie with, with animated. animated hot dogs. Yeah. That one was fucking bad. I sausage see. sauce. I I begrudgingly watched Sausage Party one night. It was on Netflix, and I had I was like, fine. Netflix fucking be, basically bullied me into watching it. The only time Netflix ever bullied me into watching anything was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The series. I loved it. The series or the movie. The series. Oh, the movie was wonderful. I loved the movie as well. Mm. Luke Perry. Uh, R.I.P. R.I.P. Luke Perry. But shout out to Jungle Boy. Yes, yes, that's true. So I, like I, I was impressed with them uh, for not doing that. Uh, they, they were delivering a movie with a certain rating, but they weren't leaning on the rating as a marketing tool. Yeah, which is uh, good, because let the story tell the story. Exactly. Not, um, <clears throat> not that, I mean... Look, this the movie fu the, the, fucked up, the fucked up thing is, is watching it back last night, I'm like, because the, the DVD I have is the NC-17 version. Right. I'm watching it, and I'm like... There's nothing in this that's worse than an R rating. No. Especially in 2019 standards. Right. This might be PG-13. Uh, you know what I mean? You take a couple of fucks out, and this could very well be a PG-13 rated movie. Yeah. You, you know, maybe you put a, you know, you, you cover up a couple of the tits, but it's like, maybe you don't take all the panties off. Right. You, well, take your panties show, off. <laughs> it just shows you how, one, the Motion Picture Ratings Association is hot garbage. Uh, go see this film is not yet rated, mm -hmm. and you'll share my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also the fact that it's like, yeah, if this, if all it is is if you go in there and they're like, well, this movie got an R rating, and this is no different than that, so it should be an R rating. Um, what's her name? Uh, Rebel Wilson. Uh, she was a lawyer before she was an actor, and she ended up to put really, yeah, in Australia, and huh. so. 
She ended up for the the new movie, uh, The Hustle, or I mean, it's not new anymore, but that movie with her and uh, the Princess Diaries there. Anne Hathaway? Anne Hathaway, where they like play con artists. Okay. Uh, That movie was supposed to get an R, but got a PG-13 rating, and it was because she went in and cited like A, B, and C movies all did similar things, and they were allowed to be this rating, so we should be as well. Mm. And that's kind of how this rating system goes because like let's just say hypothetically showgirls was to get an r rating well Mm -hmm. now if i make a movie that's you know about sexy strippers and it's just like well showgirls was able to do this right so i don't have i shouldn't be nc-17 right uh i mean the the i just i actually watched a youtube video uh which was breaking down uh, it, it was basically, for lack of a better term, the rise and I think it's titled actually the rise and fall of PG thirteen. Yeah. Um, great example. Jaws is a PG rated movie. It was created for it. I mean, well, it, that was a little bit after that. Uh, Indiana Jones is really well, what did it. Well, yeah, one of those Spielberg movies. Uh, t- Temp- Temple of Doom came out with a PG rating, and literally they ripped a man's beating heart out of his chest, and they were like, "Fuck." This, yeah, uh, the first movie ever released in theaters with a PG thirteen was uh, Red Dawn. Okay, Wolverines, bitch, <laughs> and watching, I I forgot so many scenes in Red Dawn, but it's like they literally shoot up a school. Oh yeah, and I'm like, wow, okay, yeah, PG thirteen at the very least. Yeah, <laughs> like there was a lot of stuff that I'm like, that's probably R. Uh, if it was after Columbine, it would definitely definitely be R. R. There's a lot of R-rated stuff in there. But yeah, so I mean, like, Jaws is a PG-rated movie. Poltergeist, PG-rated movie. Raiders of the Lost Ark, PG-rated movie. Raiders has people's faces melting and bursting with blood. Like, these are... like Jaws, Quint's death is violent as fuck. Yes, it is. And it's PG. Right. So to say that this deserved... An NC-17. I don't think it did. Yeah. I believe that contractually, they almost were like, like the NPR were like, yeah, fuck it. If you want this, we'll fucking give it to you. We're not, we don't give yeah, a sure. shit. It's definitely R, but if you want well, this rating. Uh, right. Nobody's going to be able to see this in your theater. Because, nobody's going to go anyway. <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to go anyway. But that doesn't help, right? Because right. most major chain movie theaters do not allow NC-17 movies because it's just associated with pornography. Right. And so even though the NC-17 rating is not the X rating or the triple X rating, right, right. Uh, which the MPAA got away from, right. it's, you know, it's basically like, yeah, Showcase, the presenting sponsor of our radio show. Correct. Um, they're not going to want an NC-17 movie because that rating is associated with pornography. And and, and this this was the first one to really break that down. It was the first NC-17 movie to get a wide release. It was right. in about uh, 1,300 theaters right. uh, across the country. And it, the big thing wasn't even so much the theaters because, yeah, okay, the, ma- the major theaters wouldn't carry and blah, blah, blah. But more importantly, it... It inhibited the marketing right. because you couldn't put an ad in a right. newspaper for an NC-17 movie. Right. As stupid as that is, it's like you're literally telling people the rating of the movie. Like The point of these newspaper ads right. is to let people know. I still go back to um, <laughs> my brother went to see Natural Born Killers in the theater with my mother. That's a lot. She looked at it, the newspaper ad... It was a big close-up of Woody Harrelson, who at the time she only knew from Cheers. Yeah, big, big, big and the close. quote on Natural Born Killers said, viciously hilarious. That's not true. She walked out before the opening credits. Because yeah. that diner scene goes right before the opening credits, yeah. and she was done. She's like, I'll see you in two hours. Yeah, I'm out. I'm going to go watch The Princess Diaries or something. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck this noise. But, like, that's what those are for. It's like, and now, like, they've even gotten more descriptive with, like, the ratings. It's like, this is rated R, and there's, like, 47 reasons why, including smoking. Yeah. Like, fine. Whatever. More more information, more better for everybody else. Because it's like, (sighs) if you, you, I hate people that blame. Like, I hate the whole... They put blame on like movies. Oh, movies and video games get blamed. But not but not even for like bad behavior, but like 
Like, how dare you? Uh, yeah. Like, I went to see your movie. How dare you make that movie? Oh, yeah. So it's like if you have a rating and it says R-rated, first of all, it's R-rated. Right. Or in this case, NC-17. Right. You're now accepting that if you buy a ticket, you're at the least going to hear some cursing, maybe some violence right. and some sex. And now it's gotten, like I said, so descriptive. One of my favorites was uh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean was uh, rated PG-13, and one of them was for pirate peril. Yeah, okay. I don't know what that is, that's... but fuck me, that's hilarious. That is very, very funny. Um, yeah. You have no excuse now for going to a movie. Right. For, for not, in, like, you, like, if you don't like a movie, fine. Right. But if you, if you are condemning a movie for its content, you have no fucking excuse, yeah. especially in 2019 where the internet is a thing. I am a firm believer, and I'm fine with the rating system, right? I mean, because it's all fucked up, but yeah, it, whatever. All, it needs uh, to be there. Right, well, because it, at the very least, just like what you're saying, it needs to exist so that I know at the base level what I'm getting myself into. Right. Right, because a G movie and an R movie are very right. different movies. Right. And so... Yeah, if I know what level of movie I'm getting myself into. Now, if I don't agree with the content in which the creator presented to me, that is not on the creator, that is on me. Correct. And I hate people that make claims that TV and movies need to change. Like, you know, the big proponent is uh, pro wrestling, right? Yeah, yeah. Is, hey, we need to make this a... What if my kids... What if my kids are watching? What if my kids are watching? And it's just like, (laughs) well, that falls on you. That's called parenting, not TV producing. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, my your kid could get up and watch... Uh, turn on the TV at 10 o'clock on a Thursday night. Again, in a day and age that we have cell phones, I'm sorry, you, you know... Your yeah. your kids have access to horse porn at their fingertips if you give them a cell phone. Yeah. They just do. I right. don't care how many parental locks on you put on it, they'll find it. Right, they'll find it. They'll well, find that dick. Well, the big thing is, is you know, I'm not even going to go that graphic. Because you Hashtag know, they'll find that dick. They'll find that dick. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag. Mike's Guide to Parenting. They'll find that dick. They'll find that dick. What happened? Johnny found that dick. He found that dick. God damn it, that show was right. That show was right. Oh, God, now he's scarred for life. He's into all sorts of weird shit. You know what? I'm bl- Because Johnny found that dick, I'm blaming that movie show. Yeah, that movie show is responsible <laughs> for hashtag found that dick. I found that dick. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, it's just it's frustrating <laughs> because it's like, yeah, if your kid on a school night finds Sons of Anarchy where they're like, you know, burning mm-hmm. a man's tattoo off. Yeah, it's like that was a good one. It's like, you know what? That's on you, asshole. Yeah. You're watching a TV MA television show past 10 o'clock at night. That's on you, man. Uh, eat a dick if you have a problem with that. Yeah, That is not Sons of That's, Anarchy. That shit's off. on you. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Maybe your kid shouldn't be up past 10 o'clock. Also, not everything should be for children. No. No, I mean, that's... Sexy strippers with potential Muppet Coke problems is hashtag Muppet Coke problems. Muppet Coke problems <laughs> is... <laughs> you know, as long as that happens... You know, that's oh, on you. Christ. That's on you, man. Not oh on me. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, so anyway. No, no me strips. <laughs> yeah. Um, Somebody gets pushed. She pushes someone down the stairs. I mean, the the, the whole, the, again, the whole strip club scene is, is ludicrous. Uh, Crystal Connor shows up with Kyle McLaughlin. We're going to run through a bunch of this stuff real quick. Yeah, uh, but there's, there's a lot of points that I, I have problems with. Um, wh- the whole movie. Well, the... Here's the thing. The actors are all going for it. That's my main bullet point. My main takeaway yeah. point at the hour 12 mark of this or whatever fucking time you're actually listening to this, because um, I know we talked about Elvis a lot earlier on that might be cut out. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty good. It was pretty stuff. good stuff. Uh, that might, I might just cut it into a bonus episode, our new content, Elvis <laughs> talk. Elvis talk. Elvis um, movie talk. But okay, so so she she's on stage. She sees Crystal Connors uh, and Kyle McLaughlin. I don't know what his character's name is, Zach or Zeke or whatever. Fuck, it doesn't matter. Nice hair, Dick. Uh, fucking flock of seagulls over here, and uh, they're sitting at the table. I'm one to talk about the fucking hair. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You, yeah. And you it looks like soft serve ice cream. Anyway. So far away. <laughs> and, um, so they see her up on stage, and you know she she does her job. She leans into it. Yeah, she she's she's doing job. her thing. She's stripping on the stage. All right. God bless. And uh, makes no money. No. Like that's a full club. 
and nobody. nobody's putting money up on the stage. Problem number one. Yeah, that's why she's okay. That's that that should have been why she was pissed, not because she saw Crystal Connor sitting in the front row blowing her kisses, but because all these scumbags taking up the rail space aren't dropping bills. Yeah, right. She had one that she ripped out of her thong as she ran to the back, and I'm like. That was just a token fucking effort. Let's be honest. Yeah, right. That was just to show, hey, she, remember, she's a stripper and they have ones. Yeah. That's all that was. Anyway, puts on her gimmick, goes out and starts hustling for lap dances. Uh, she sees them, doesn't want to interact with them. Another stripper's over at their table. She comes over, says, hey, they want to talk to you. Yeah. Robert Davi comes over. Johnson, though, the other one. Uh, let's, let's talk here. What's going on? She's like, oh, they want to talk to Heather. Heather, uh, Nomi's name at the strip club was Heather because people want to fuck a Heather apparently more than a Nomi. I don't get it. And they go over. You'd fuck me if you know me. So she goes over <laughs> and basically says, you know, she tries to introduce herself as Heather. And yeah. immediately Gina Gershon is just like, hey, Nomi, like your nails. What are you doing? Let's buy a dance. I want you to fuck him and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. So she starts laying out club ground rules, which, okay, fine. Well, well played on them for actually adhering to some that strip clubs do actually have rules. They're yeah. not these Wild West fucking Sexuals. free-for-alls. Yeah. Not all of them. And Sometimes you can win a Bud Light t-shirt. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get two lap dances, you get a Bud Light T-shirt. Sometimes a two for one with a T-shirt included or a towel. Who knows? Maybe you go to their golf tournament. I don't know. Maybe a beach ball, <laughs> inflatable. You got to do it yourself. And you got to carry it the rest of the night like an asshole. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I got this. Uh, fuck. Anyway, yeah. She lays out that, that uh, you know they don't. Uh, they they only do they only do lap dances one at a time, and they don't do women there. <laughs> and now so Gina Gershon starts up in the ante. Two hundred dollars because it was like uh, I think it was like fifty bucks a lap dance or something like that. Yeah. And uh, and sh- and she starts out with a hundred. She's like, no, two hundred, no. And she just kind of leans back and she's like, five hundred. Oh shit. Johnson, no, the other one, standing over her shoulder. He's like, done. <laughs> it looks at her. He's like, fucking done. Get your shit and get out back. <laughs> Dance for these people, uh, because she lays out that she do, she wouldn't have to dance with Gina Gershon. She would only have to dance for Kyle McLaughlin. Gina Gershon would watch. Okay, fine. I guess we're playing ball here. They're just doing blow the whole time anyway. It's weird. Uh, way in the open. Lot of coke. Way in the open. Okay, fine. It's a Vegas strip club. Vegas strip club, baby. It's basically New Hampshire. Live free or die. Yeah, right. So. They get in the back, and here's one of my other problems. Inside baseball, a little bit into strip clubs. They walk to the back, and they're in the little lap dance area. And there's you know girls giving lap dances right. in the background. And Elizabeth Berkeley says to them, she goes, okay, go sit over there. I'll go change the music. Okay. That can't happen. No, because the DJ. Can't happen. First of all, yes. The DJ controls the music. Second, Second of, all, of all, all those other people in the background getting lap dances are, are paying per song. Correct. So if you go and switch the song, that means that lap dance is over. That's not how it works. I understand for the movie's sake, they didn't want to just sit there for an extra 45 seconds in that awkward time where we're like, right. let's sit and pretend to be friends while we wait for this song to end and the next one to begin so we start your song. Yeah, right. Also... She gets into the lap dance. First of all, backing up a bit uh, to where they're back in the dressing room area and Robert D- Davi's talking to the, the new girl, Penny, who directed the sequel, by the way. Uh, and he's, expl- he's explaining how lap dances work. And <laughs> You dance on the lap. Good talk. No, no, it's even better. It's one of the grossest basic job training sequences oh. ever. Right. Um, dick. Hashtag found that dick. I found that dick. So... He's like, okay, so uh, it's it's. I think he said something like, it's fifty bucks a dance. Uh, you you can touch them. They can't touch. Uh, touch and go. That that's what he said. He's like, it's touch and go. If they touch you, they go. You tell a bouncer, they go. Unless they pay extra, then they can touch you. If they come in their pants, okay, fine. If they take it out and come all over you, <laughs> call a bouncer unless they're paying extra. Gross. Gross. <laughs> Gross. No, thank you. If he takes it out and comes all over you, call a bouncer unless they're paying extra. Gross. No, thank you. Because you got to think about it. This isn't just a movie. That means that this character 
if someone was, let's say, to pay, even if he wasn't paying yeah. extra and he was getting kicked out, she now has to do the rest of her shift yeah. with dry him all over her. Or, or just knowing that that happened, because as G.I. Joe taught me, <laughs> how do you not take a half day? Half the battle. How do you not take a half day yeah. on that type of deal? Oh, so yeah. anyway, so they do a little lap dance. Kyle McLaughlin comes all in his pants uh, because it's basically it's a foreshadowing scene. Yeah. Uh, weirdly enough, this lap dance is a foreshadowing scene to their actual sex scene because it's mirrored. Right. Yes. Uh, it's just instead of on a strip club couch, it's done in his pool. But she does all the same movements, which emulate um, basically if if you're if you're out fishing on a boat and you reel in like a nice three foot bass and you drop it on the boat and it's flopping about trying to gasp for breath, dying. That would explain how. Elizabeth Berkeley's character, Nomi Malone, believes sex works. Hashtag found that dick. <laughs> she basically fucks, like, his sternum. Yeah. While, while like, she was a, a horizontal, it's the Tommy wacky, Wus- inflatable arm person. It's this Tommy Wiseau school of sexual assault. <laughs> yes. Because that's not sexual relations. That's assault. Mm. So, uh, so that happens. Uh, all's well in the world, and uh, she gets an audition. Uh, she gets the job on the on the yeah. thing because because Gina Gershon really likes her, uh, or yeah, or, or at she... least we think she does. But Gina Gershon is also kind of an asshole because, like we said, there's only one good person in this movie, right? It's Molly, and it's Molly, and we haven't talked about Molly in a while. Yeah, uh, just making them clothes. She's just making them clothes. She's just being a good person. She's not trying to hashtag She's, she's that buying dick. psychopaths who dive into traffic in and out burger and then offering them a place to live yeah, despite having animal style fries thrown in her face. Like, Ugh. because she asked where Thousand you Thousand Island from? dressing and onions. Gross, son. And yeah, um, I need the best. so she's. Nomi has the job on, on, on the goddess thing. Yeah. She's, she's, a, she's part of the chorus line, okay? Yep. And. So what happens is, apparently, uh, the black girl in the cast was Crystal's understudy. Yeah. It wasn't completely explained well, but if you pay close enough attention you to the intricate out. storytelling of Paul Verhoeven's showgirls, yeah, right, of course. you'll pick it up. Because there's a scene where they're up on the stage in the middle of the show, and the black girl has kind of a rivalry, rivalry with the white girl with dreadlocks. Right. Black girl yells at the dreadlock girls' kids, because they're in the back being children, but also at the same time, I kind of got it. They were being assholes. Yeah, of course. They were being, even the kids weren't good people in Vegas. They were being loud assholes. So the black girl just starts yelling and cursing, like, shut the fuck up, get the fuck out of yeah, here. right. And, and the girl starts crying. Anyway, so up on stage, they're dancing about, and the dreadlock girl has some, like, uh, stones, like, that yeah. look like they came off of a costume. She kind of rolls the dice, crap style. It hits the ground. Uh, the, the black girl's hoisted up. And her dance partner slips, he falls out, she hits the ground, busted knee, torn ACL, she's out, she's not going to make it to the Super Bowl, sorry. It's also 95, so that's a career ender at that's that That's a career ending injury, at least, three, at least eight months. <laughs> she's down, down for the count. So they need a new understudy. Yes. They got three people trying out. They got the dreadlock girl. Yep. They got Nomi. Yep. And they got redheaded, who I believe was Kim. It was the other girl who went to the boat show to hear Caesar sing. Nice. <laughs> that one. She actually went back, heard Caesar sing, and had a weird dead look the rest of the movie. <laughs> 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 Shit happened at that boat show. Of course it did. <laughs> Shit went down. Hashtag she found that dick. <laughs> after the lobsters. <laughs> yeah. She found that dick. Found that dick. So. Uh, Nomi gets the understudy role. However, she pissed off Crystal at some point. That she also got the understudy role because she fucked Kyle McLaughlin. Yeah. So that happened in between here. Yeah. So she. Ends so the up pool getting... scene happened there with her casual coke habit that is apparently a huge problem, but not really. Got cut out of the movie because we were trying to get that NC-17 rating. Right. We can't deal with backstory when we're trying to show pussy. Anyway. Um, so they have the pool scene, which, okay, as ludicrous as the sex scene is, yes. my biggest problem with this actual scene okay. is of all the people in this movie, Kyle McLaughlin had to use a body double. 
Really? Because there's a shot where his character walks to the pool naked from behind. Okay. And if you know it's a body double, you look, and it looks like John Cena all jacked up. Like, I'm watching it. I'm like, holy shit, this guy has more muscles on top of muscles. Then it cuts to the front shot, and it's torso up, flabby-ass fucking Kyle McLaughlin. I'm like, what the hell? It looked like a Naked Gun parody of a body double. That's it was like, funny. what the <laughs> fuck? And of all the movies... To be a pretentious actor and ask for a body double is the one where all your co-stars are Amazing. showing way more than they should. Yeah, right. Everybody's... Way more than it's necessary. Yeah. There's no reason to be bottomless the entire movie. Yeah, and everybody is. <laughs> and everybody is. Everybody's straight up Donald Duckin. Yep. And so they have the sex. Uh, it's weird. Yeah, she um, gets the understudy role. She gets the understudy role. But then... Um, they have to cancel her understudy role. He's he basically uh, Xbox her and he faxes her the understudy cancellation. Yeah, and she gets pissed off. Does one of her Nomi Stormins, yeah. where she's literally pushing the secretary into a wall. Like that's a lawsuit. Yeah, that's just you know Coked HR. That, that's an HR problem right there. You're in a real fucking Vegas casino. You got a job. Yeah, probably with the mob too. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, well, Crystal threatened her lawyers and blah 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 because you know Crystal all of a sudden got threatened. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. You're back to the chorus line okay fuck off yeah. so the redhead who saw caesar sing nice <laughs> gets the understudy role and we're in the show and crystal and nomi are kind of having like a a back and forth it's almost like a weird like west side story dance battle thing where yeah. they're like just kind of bumping cunts together a bunch of times yeah it's, it's weird. weird it's a lot of pelvic thr thrusts and then they're yeah. going back and nomi throws her down the stairs yeah. But because Nomi didn't rat when the dreadlock girl took the black girl out, well, the dreadlock girl stepped up this time and says, I saw the whole thing. Nomi wasn't even near her. Yeah, that's right. So then, because <laughs> Molly saw it all happen, she took Nomi aside and was like, I know. Bullshit. I saw it. Her back was to you. You pushed her. You motherfucker. Yeah. We're no longer friends. Now, Side story to Molly. She's infatuated with this long haired, looks like Kenneth Branagh motherfucker. Yes. And he's, I don't know, a singer? Maybe. Ish. I don't know. Lounge. Is Kenneth Branagh the right, the right name? I don't know. The guy who directed Cutthroat Island. <laughs> I've never seen Cutthroat Island. He married Gina Davis for a half a minute. Yeah, to do Cutthroat Island. Exactly. I'm going to find his name. I want to say it's Kenneth Branagh, but I don't feel that's correct. That's fine. Um, you figure that out. Keep so she's with infatuated pot. with him, and he's his billboards are all over Vegas. All over Vegas. And cut, throat, <laughs> that's right. island, island uh, directed by uh, Rennie Harlan. Oh, okay. So he looks like Rennie Harlan. Sure. Not Kenneth Branagh, who was another actor. He looks like Rennie Harlan. Yes. Um, anyway. Cutthroat Island. So he's going to be at this party because now Nomi has the role. Right. Because the other girl saw Caesar sing. She's all fucked up. Yeah, no. She's got Gina Gershon got knocked downstairs. She's all fucked up. Right. The only one that's left, the standing Nomi, Nomi, which was foreshadowed because uh, there was like a scene with uh, Gina Gershon and Elizabeth Berkeley where they were kind of talking on the stage and she was kind of quoting Elvis a bunch, which kind of goes back to our original conversation on the show. Hashtag full circle. Full circle. And she says, the last person left standing on the stage gets the job. Yeah, okay. Now we're here. Nomi Malone is the star of Goddess at the Stardust. <laughs> yeah. Which isn't a casino anymore because they blew it up. Yeah, they did. And Al Pacino was sad about it when Brad Pitt robbed him. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> they blew up the stardust! Yeah. We gotta do Devil's Advocate, by the way. Yeah, we do. Oh my God, I love that movie. Uh, that's all I was thinking. Keanu. Yeah! And it's a Keanu. There Keanu. we go. The Keanu verse coming back full circle. Vanity. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck your sister. All right. Hoo -ah. Hoo -ah. Anyway. Sendable woman. I'm a devil. Okay. <laughs> Where are my lifts? And. Uh, so uh, the, the Rennie Harlan looking motherfucker is going to be at this party that they're throwing right. for Nomi because she had her big debut yeah, on Vegas. It. Everything went great. Blah, blah, blah. The whole crew is coming. And she keeps trying to get Molly to go because, oh, you're, you're like super fan number one of right. Rennie Harlan over here. Let's do it. 
Yeah, you can have sex with her. Let's be friends again. Please. So she shows up. She's still kind of pissed at her, but she's like, where's Rennie Harlan? I'm not looking that character's name up. I don't go, fuck, he's Rennie Harlan. It doesn't matter. We're so far into it, it's Rennie Harlan now. But you know what? We've been off for a few weeks, so give us a break. Have a heart. (laughs) And so, okay. You can just pause here for a second. All right, and we can go. And we're back. (laughs) So... Rennie Harlan goes up to Nomi, and they're all being introduced. This is Nomi, the new star. She knocked a bitch down the stairs. She's kind of a hustler. Cool beans. Yeah. He's like, hey, I like you. She says something like, I like your music. He looks, he goes, I like your ass. Give me a call. Because everybody's scum in Vegas. Right, and of course, she's a stripper, so she's a sex object. And she's, well, even well, at that point, she wasn't. She was yeah. a star of the show. Right. Because if you listen, her. they were like, when they were trying to replace Gina Gershon, before they got to know me, they were throwing names out. They're like, let's get Janet Jackson. Let's get Paula Abdul. Let's get whoever. And I'm thinking to myself, none of them would do a fully nude show in Vegas. I'm sorry. Especially in 95. In 95, we were years away from Janet Jackson flashing a tit at the Super Bowl. Right. And- that wasn't happening. Paula yeah. Abdul was not dropping trow in Vegas, especially when you kept saying, we're not going to pay those salaries. Yeah, right. Let's go in-house. Who's the bitch from the cheetah? <laughs> yeah, who's the... After we so, can find that dick. So, after, like, literally immediately after he goes, I like your ass, give me a call sometime, she just kind of gives him a cockeyed stare well, and goes, the Muppet freak out. this is my friend Molly. She's a fan. Yep. Molly walks up. Gush, 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 gush. Okay. So a little bit goes by, a little bit of a party montage. And Nomi looks across, and it looks like Molly and Rennie Harlan are having a good time. They're chit-chatting, a little bit of nuzzling, a little bit of kissing on the neck, cool beans, Vegas parties. They go back to a room. Nomi's like, oh, cool, she's going to get some. Awesome. Her and Kyle McLaughlin still having a good time, still on good terms. Yep. They're like, let's get the fuck out of here. Well, while this is all happening, Rennie Harlan has taken the black girl upstairs. And again, much like most of this movie, subtlety is not a thing. No. They walk in, and before the door even closes, two big Neanderthals close and lock the other door. And I mean, like, chunk deadbolt. Oh, yeah. And she looks and goes, A Bronx tale, now you can't leave. She literally goes, What's going on? He grabs her and punches her in the face, <laughs> knocks her down to the bed, grabs the white guy, pulls his pants off, and says, fuck her, and screams at the top of his lungs, black pussy. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> it's especially because she was showing up to fuck willingly. Yeah, right. There was right. no reason for you- this rape other than the fact that that they've made it a point to make Molly the only good character and she has the worst shit happen to oh, her. Oh, yeah. Like, she was willing to bang you. Already. Cool. And I bet with a little coaxing, your friends could have got involved too. Oh, yeah. But the fact that literally you Bronx tail the door and punch <laughs> her in the <laughs> face, yeah. not a great start. Yeah. So as Nomi and Kyle McLaughlin are getting ready to leave the party, they basically <laughs> toss her body <laughs> into the middle of the party. Like literally, there's this lavish black tie cocktail Event. party and her body is just <laughs> hurled into the middle of it like flopping sweat and <sighs> blood coming down her legs somehow they dressed her again yeah right they put her dress back on after ripping it off well it's also like hey after we just <laughs> sexually assaulted this person <laughs> let's <laughs> let's show everybody you know what i mean like oh, it was awful that's not how people act so, we we cut to the hospital. Yeah. Molly, all fucked up. Yes. Nomi, all pissed off. Yeah. Because she basically facilitated this rape and beating of her friend. Right. The only good person in this movie. Yeah. That's where Kyle McLaughlin has her rap sheet yes. and runs her the fuck down yeah. and is like, look, Polly Ann, which foreshadows or you know, back, back sells uh, the fact that 
when she was auditioning, the producer kept saying, you look like Pollyanna. Well, her name in real life was Pollyanne. That's why she was so freaked out by him calling her Pollyanna. Yeah, right. It's just bad storytelling. It is. Anyway, so she's got like 47 hooking charges and one Coke possession that, that apparently- That was the most important one. Insta- it, it tells everybody that's watching and paying very close attention, again, to the intricate storytelling of Paul Verhoeven's showgirls <laughs> that this character has had a drug problem the whole time, which explains her Coke wacky Muppets. Kermit the Frog behavior. Her Coke Muppet behavior. So, yeah. I- so, she's like, oh, well, fuck you, because that's her go-to. Yeah, right. And he's well, like, no, also- no, 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 fuck you, and you're going to perform every... Basically, he starts extorting her. Yeah. He's like, you're going to perform every night. You're going to be put up on a billboard. You're going to become famous. You're going to make a fuckload of money, and you're not going to leave until I tell you to fucking leave. Yeah, which is weird, because and- that's, not- that's not how employment works. So, and-, and she goes, well, what about Molly? And he goes, well... I'm sure Rennie Harlan will give her enough money and will open up a dress shop in the fucking Caesars Palace Forum for her. That's what's going to happen to Molly. Shut the fuck up. Take your clothes off. Get on stage and do goddess. Mm-hmm. Anywho. Yeah, that's sh- the Oscar moment. Right. That, that was the moment Kyle Glass was like, I need to get the fuck out of here. Can we? That, is that it for me? Yeah, for <laughs> Am I wrapped? Please? Oh, he. Some of his interviews, though. He's oh. come out and he's been like, "Oh my God, that this was the biggest mistake of my life." Uh, it was it was originally reported that he walked out of the premiere. He's and he said no. It yeah, a, it was a 2011 interview where he was asked about it. He said, "No, I I absolutely didn't walk out of the premiere." He said, "I sat through the whole thing." No, I'm sorry. He said, "I suffered through the entire two hours." He said, "In every scene, watching the premiere for the first time ever, I'm like, well, that was a bad scene." I bet it will get better. And it never did. Yeah, right. And they just kept getting worse. Oh, I can imagine. He hates this movie. I would love to chat with Kyle McLaughlin at any point. We could try. Kyle, tweet us at Mike Went at whatever. Mm, uh, hashtag that movie show. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. I'm going through an identity crisis. Don't worry about it. So, Nomi is like, all right, well, I'm done. Yeah. So she goes and visits Crystal because Crystal's in the same hospital as Molly. Convenience. Conveniently. It's the only hospital in Vegas. And Crystal kind of absolves her. She's like, you know what? I needed a vacation, and I taught you well. I told you that's how I got my job, by pushing some bitch down the stairs, and you pushed me down the stairs. I should have seen it coming. My bad. Yeah, my bad. We're good. And then- Just like Vegas, abusive relationships. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. And we're so just- She goes back, sees Molly. Yes. Is like, I got this. Calls up Rennie Harlan. Yeah. Sup, bro? Want to bang? Let's cool. Bang. So she gets all dolled up in her leopard shit. The cheetah. Uh, it's actually the best she looked in the whole movie. Yes. If I'm just being honest, that outfit, the leopard two-piece with the, the thigh-high boots was like, and, and the way she had her hair done was completely different. Like she looked in this one scene, she looked completely different than she did in the entire movie. And it was probably the best she looked in the entire movie. Right. Um, because we have to be, uh, you know, objectifying her because it's an NC-17 movie. Um, <laughs> so she goes in. She sees the two, the same two guys that raped and fucked her friend, right. raped and beat her friend, whatever. Um, and she's like, hey, how you doing? And they're like, oh, yeah, he's in there because this is now a real date. Yeah, right. Because she's not fangirl. She walks in, uh, closes the door because she has to keep them off guard. Right. And in one of the weird twists in this highly absurd movie yeah right she had like i don't know paint or lipstick or something on her nipples yeah okay like a, yeah. because it was all i could look at because she takes off her top and it's like what the fuck is going on here why are they like glowing red yeah well, yeah why do you have laser pointers and then she of course reaches into her back pulls her switchblade from the opening of the movie right. puts it to his neck says if you make a sound i'll fucking cut you and she proceeds to fucking stomp the shit out of rennie harlan she knocks him Boot. stupid with those big ass fucking heels yeah. like i mean like american history x curb stomp Oof, beat I his know. ass brutal comes out tells the boys He's going to sleep it off. Oh, you wore him out? You're goddamn right. And she sashays her she ass on out of here. Smash cut to her thumb over the highway. She's out. 
she's out. We pull out. We see that horribly moved camera shot yeah, right. that foreshadows bimbos. Nomi <laughs> takes Hollywood. Uh, Showgirls 2. I want to see it. That never happened. Uh, that's the travesty of this movie. That the sequel, the never. real sequel, yeah, never no, happened. Not Showgirls 2 in 2011. Right. In 2011, uh, Rena Rafali, who... Like, Penny. Penny, the bit player in this movie... Um, who, if you look up her IMD, has literally played a stripper in every movie she's been in. Right. Uh, decided in 2011, uh, as you pointed out when we were at the bar, it's basically probably like the, the copyright just lapsed. Yeah. MGM went out of business. They lost it, so she probably picked it up and was right. like, you know what? Showgirls 2. Pennies well, from funny. heaven. It's funny because like you have to know her character's name for the first one to get the reference. Right. It's kind of funny because when you like are an extra in a movie mm-hmm. and it's boring because you're basically just like in a crowd and walking from like one point to the next, your mind wanders. For twelve hours. Yeah, for twelve hours. Your mind wanders. And I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it happens to me all the time where I'm like, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make up what this character oh, is. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Right. And so I've come up with a backstory. Story and why this character is yeah, doing yeah, yeah. this, where we go from here, and the next thing you know, I have a two-hour movie based on this exactly person in the background walking to a table, and um, it's basically what she did. She just had the balls to put money behind it. Yeah, right. Like she's like, we've been too pussy to actually be like, I'm going to take my extra from fucking the Expendables and make it a movie. <laughs> right. This chick was just like, yeah, no, this is what this stripper would have done. Right. After she got introduced in Showgirls, because I mean, her character did kind of weave in and out because um uh, nomi's character had like a brief uh, again we we hinted on on glenn Plummer and then got completely off of him but his stalker tactics were like he popped up everywhere he found the trailer he found out where she worked he got a job where she worked he stalked her at the fucking strip club yeah he stalked her at the casino he stalked her at the thing he just kept popping the fuck up and then he said he wrote a dance routine for For her. her. And then she shows up at his place after she got the job at Goddess to kind of be like, I got the fucking job. I'm excited. Someone celebrate with me, even though nobody celebrated with her because Vegas sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I actually enjoy Vegas, but the people there are terrible, (laughs) uh, is what this movie is telling us. And and he's got Rena Rafali in the background all banged out. Yeah, right. And, and And then when she comes out, uh, he says in an off, in just throwaway line, he's like, oh, that was just a girl who wanted a part in my, my dance routine. And she goes, you're not going to give her my part, which, of course, was Nomi's part originally right. written for, which was obvious bullshit. Uh, yeah, of course. And then he actually put it on at the club she got arrested at okay, and got booed out of the fucking place. Like him, him and two other him, Rena Rafali and two other extra strippers, were just doing that bad dancing over chairs that wasn't good and deserved every boo it got in the room. Yes, until the DJ was like, "Fuck this nonsense," <laughs> and just drowned them out. Right until they got the fuck off the stage. And then in that moment, Nomi's standing there and they have a little interaction. He's like, "Oh yeah, I'm marrying her because you know." And Nomi's like, do you love her? He's like, well, she's pregnant. It's like, oh, well, I guess. All love. Right. That's it's, how it works, it's kids. It's a thing. So, yeah. That's Showgirls. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> That's Showgirls. That is 1995's Showgirls. Um, wow. It was a lot. It was a lot. We unpacked a lot for our first time back. <laughs> The next few, we're getting our rhythm back. Yeah. Hashtag find that dick. Yeah. We're finding that dick. <laughs> and uh, the next few will probably be shorter. Uh, but yeah. So thanks for th- thanks for tuning in. Uh, and welcome back, everybody. Yeah. And be sure to subscribe on all forms of podcasts. Tell your friends. We are literally on every podcast app. Type in that movie show. You'll find the logo. You'll find the stream. Uh, we are starting on Saturday mornings after the radio show airs. We're going to be uploading the audio of those shows to the audio stream. So you can get those, uh, thatmovieshow.net and facebook.com slash thatmovieshowtv. You'll be finding uh, the quick bonus episodes that Eddie and myself will be doing. Yep. Uh, later this week, I will have Hustlers and Three from Hell uploaded in video and audio form. They'll be 10 to 15 minutes-ish. Yep. Uh, and we're going to be building the website uh, as we go. 
more content, more content. Follow us on social media at Mike Went, uh, still at Liam NAI, also at 56 Ridge. Hashtag that movie show. Next week, we got Rambo First Blood planned. Yeah. But we might do something stupid like Showgirls 2. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, until then, uh, please follow us on social media. Please tell your friends to subscribe to the podcast and social media, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Bye.